He's zealot. He's everywhere mm -hmm. from World War mm -hmm. One to World War Two to the Cold War to the New Frontier. Hi, I'm Nick Gillespie with Reason TV, and today we're talking with David Nassau. He's a historian, and his most recent book is The Patriarch. It's a biography of Joseph Kennedy, the father of JFK, RFK, and Teddy Kennedy. David, thanks for talking with us. Delighted to be here. What brought you to the Joseph Kennedy Project? The Kennedys. <laughs> the, yeah, Kennedy, no, the Kennedys came to me. Yes. Yeah. Kennedys came to me, and they said, we want you to do a biography of our father. I said, I can't. I'm working on something else. Kennedys don't take no for an answer. Six months later, I got a call from Senator Kennedy, went to Washington to talk to him. I said to them, you don't want me to do this because I'm going to find stuff that the family's not going to like. And he said, no, everybody knows about Gloria Swanson. And my father wasn't an anti-Semite. And whatever you find is going to be better than what's out there. And, and mm. that's true. I think what drove them was that there would have been a tacit agreement since 1952 when Jack ran for the Senate that Joe would be sent into exile and whatever charges came up against him, the family would not answer and Joe would not answer. And I think the family felt a tad bit guilty that no one had been, you know, no one had mm -hmm. provided any defense of the man or any true historical portrait. So, well, let's talk about the anti-Semitism when Joe Kennedy, particularly when he was, a, uh, he was the ambassador of the U.S. to England to the Court of St. James during World War II, he was pro-Nazi, or he was certainly friendly towards the Nazi and undercutting various American efforts, uh, and he was anti-Semitic, wasn't he? He was not pro-Nazi. Uh, Lindbergh was pro-Nazi. There are a bunch of others who were pro-Nazi. Kennedy was not. He was anti-war, and he believed the only way to stop the war was to make a deal with Hitler. Anything was better than war. Therefore, give Hitler 80% of what he wants. Why was he so anti-war, which was not an unpopular position for Americans to have at the time? No. From 1938 to 1940, the vast majority of Americans wanted nothing to do with the war. They did not want for a second time in a generation mm -hmm. to bail out the British Empire. Uh, certainly. Irish Americans didn't right. want to do that, and Kennedy was an Irish American. Mm -hmm. He believed also that if we went into war, or if the British went into war, the fragile economy that was just recovering from the Depression would be smacked down in a way it would never recover. Capitalism would be threatened, his fortune mm -hmm. would be threatened, democracy would be threatened, but certainly what he said over and over and over again is, Look what's happening in Britain in 1940. From 1939, certainly from 40 on, certainly once Churchill becomes prime minister, uh, free market economy in Britain, is it's over. He's essentially making the same argument that Friedrich Hayek made in The Road to Serfdom, that uh, economic planning is going to lead to an ultimate takeover of the economy. He wouldn't go that far. Mm -hmm. Economic planning isn't okay regulation mm -hmm. of runaway capitalism, right. of one, runaway bankers of uh, markets. And he, okay. he was the first head of the, uh, what, of the security and Right, and he outlawed yeah. every trick that he had used right. to make his millions of dollars, right. insider trading, selling short. Mm -hmm. But he did not want economic trading. He believed in free markets. He believed strongly in free markets. He believed that you can't fight a war with free markets. If you fight a controlled market, if you fight a dictatorship, the only way to win is to replicate those structures. Bring that, uh, his uh, antagonism towards war, uh, his non-interventionism, into the 50s, because he also, at that point, he seemed to be much more, uh, in a Cold War context, he would have been seen as an appeaser of the Soviet Union as well. Did that stem from the same worries? Absolutely. Number one, he believed that the American economy could be self-sufficient, that we didn't need to trade with Europe. We needed to trade with South America. Number two, every dollar sent to Europe to support European troops or to send American boys to be stationed in Germany was a dollar lost. Number three, the more we became an imperial military power, the more money would be withdrawn from building 
American infrastructure and American manufacturing. Dis yeah. uh, disabuse us of the long-running canard that he was a bootlegger. I mean, he, he made money off the liquor business, but he was not, it's no. not that he was a bootlegger. One of the great examples of American myth-making, mm -hmm. there were seven, eight FBI investigations of Joe Kennedy. Lots of stuff got into those FBI reports, but nothing about bootlegging. Mm -hmm. It is only in the late 60s and the early 70s when conspiracy theorists try to tie the assassination to the mob and then the mob to the Kennedy family that these rumors start to surface. But he did make money from uh, liquor, right? After I 19, mean, he, yeah, yeah, he anticipated the end of prohibition. Look, the and, guy is yeah. a brilliant, brilliant, yeah. brilliant businessman. Mm -hmm. He knows, number one, that as soon as Roosevelt's inaugurated, prohibition is ending. Number two, that you can make gin overnight in New Jersey, but fine scotch, which Americans have always had a taste for, has to come from Britain, has to be imported. As soon as the election's over, he gathers up Jimmy Roosevelt, president's son, goes to Britain, makes a deal with the top distiller to import exclusively the best American scotch, sets up Somerset importers, which brings in, I mean, it's a cash cow for the family mm. until Jack runs for office and then they he's have got to, to get out. What's the long measure of Joseph Kennedy? You know, what can we learn from his life? Because he's a conflicted person. There are as many ugly things about him as anything that might be admirable. It's an understanding of 20th century history, 20th century U.S. history that we otherwise don't get. An Irish Catholic kid from Boston who struggles to get inside but always views what's going on in the establishment with a jaundiced eye. So we can look again at World War I, at the stock market boom in the 1920s, at Hollywood. He's a participant in Hollywood when we go from silence to talkies, at the New Deal. He's a New Dealer on the inside, but skeptical of much of the New Deal policy. He's the ambassador to Great Britain. He's zealot. He's everywhere from World War I to World War II to the Cold War to the New Frontier. And if you follow his perspective, if you look at the world as he looks at it, your understanding of 20th century history is enormously expanded. You know, World War II is not Tom Brokaw's, you know, right. greatest generation. It's not a battle to end evil. Uh, there's much more to it than that. I want to thank David Nassau, uh, author of The Patriarch. It's a biography of Joseph Kennedy for Talking With Reason TV. I'm Nick Gillespie.